Welcome back to Let's Go, and in today's episode, we have the KQI3 from New, N-I-U. They have sent me out this scooter because a lot of their viewer base are looking to upgrade parts on their scooter, fix things, and they've tasked me with doing that. So, we're gonna unbox it today, and in the upcoming videos, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to fix your scooter. The model I have here today is the KQI3 Pro. The Pro comes in two colors. You've got rose gold or black. It has a 50 kilometer range, which is around 31 miles. Top speed of 25 kilometers, which is around 15 miles an hour. I wonder if we can upgrade that later. The wheels on this thing are a huge 9.5 inches and it has a width of 2.5 inches which is quite a wide surface area to be riding on. It has front and rear disc brakes as well as regenerative braking. A little fun fact on the regenerative braking they claim that you can get over 580 kilometers of extra range per year from the regenerative braking. I'm not testing that one so good luck to whoever does. Comes with a 350 watt motor in the rear with an output, maximum output of 700 watts. The max weight that this scooter can take is 120 kilograms and the scooter itself weighs in at 20.3 kilograms. I'm 80 kilograms roughly, a little bit less, a little bit more depending on the time of the year. Summer, I've lost a bit. So this should hold my weight plus my little one, no problem. The scooter itself is around 1.2 meters long and it's 541 millimeters in width when the handlebars are up. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up. We're gonna put it together. If it needs any assembly, I don't know. Uh, I've not opened it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo this bit. Is it undo that one? There we go. Ready? Do you want to do that one? Pull it like this, does it? Okay, pull it out. Perfect. Oh, a bit of tape over here. Is there any over here? Nope. And as we open the box, in order to better protect the battery, the battery has been placed in transportation mode before leaving the factory. Before you start to assemble the scooter, first connect the charger in order to activate the battery. Please read the relevant charging precautions in the manual before charging. Nice and handy little tip, and it looks like there is a little bit of assembly to be done. So looking into the box, what have we got here? Do you want to get that one out for me? Hold on, hold on, just open that one. That looks like a charging cable. As we look over here, we, we do need to assemble the handlebars. What's this one? I'll open it up for you. Your typical uh, foam inserts. I wish there would be a better way it's instead of wasting. Pull it as hard as you can. Is it? All right. Hold the camera like that for me. There we go, so it comes with a charging brick. It looks like it's got its own uh, own power, well, it doesn't look like the scooter has its own power source, so it comes with its power source outside the box, which isn't too much of a problem. This seems like it's more of a last mile scooter. Uh, it comes with a European plug, uh, which I think they sent me a UK plug, and um, I need to go dig that out. So let's chuck that to the side. These two. Okay, in the other packet we had a valve extender, so these are pneumatic tyres. So that's handy to have. We have an Allen key for attaching the neck on. And I think those are just are like they? screws. And they're probably going to be the screws, yeah. So keep those to the side for the minute. Yep. Let's get this out. Let's so we'll take it. that one out, get rid of that rubbish. Pull this out together. Get 
another bit of uh, foam there. And we've got the handle on here. Oh, oh, there we go. So pull that aside for me. I like stuff bits and bottles. This would have been so much easier if I had not broken my wrist. Uh, it's still on the mend. So in the box you've got your scooter. It doesn't look like a lot of uh, assembly to be done. Nice owner's manual there. And probably some safety and warning information. But, and there is an application that goes with this scooter, which we will activate today. At this point the audio cut out and kept cutting out during the recording. As I'm explaining here, there is a nice textured rubber on the deck and it is a nice wide open board as well, making it a nice easy clean from the looks of it. Shall we get this assembled? So yeah. A little kickstand there. There is no suspension on the scooter, but it is a commuter scooter. It's, you know, it's, it's your sort of last mile attempt. So let's go ahead and figure out how to put this together. So I'm, I'm guessing that goes on there. Are you taking off all my plastics? Yeah. It's my plastics. Yeah. You missed one there. Thank you. So it looks really easy to fold into place. Oh, there's a bit of plastic on there as well. Okay, so uh, on further inspection, so I had to get a knife to cut that off. There's a wire just in here, which I'm guessing is for the throttle and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then you've got your brake wires that go through there and then another one that comes out of there. So just be careful with that. Make sure you get that. So hold that a second for me. Yep, was it know that? Always handy to have an extra pair of hands when putting these things together so you don't have any unnecessary weight pulling on the wires. It's better to have like two people doing it with you. We've got a locking mechanism here, very similar to uh, what Ninebot do. And... Uh, Seems very solid, which is good. So pull that back. Latch it into place. Seems fairly solid. It doesn't look like it's gonna go anywhere in a rush. And then I guess you push that in, pull it out, and it will fold down again. All good. And we've got the screws. Here and the tool here. So what we do is we need to push this down a bit more and put them through the hole so it's like stays together instead of falling off and you have to put it really tight. Okay, so you get five screws in the little packet as well. Already come with thread locker pre-installed. And we're just gonna insert these into the neck. Right, so I just wanna show you here that the, uh, the tool itself, not great quality um, to put the neck on. It has rounded it off, so I've just gone back to my regular tool. So make sure you have another three millimeter to hand. All right, the neck is all on, uh, all good. We are left over with one, so I'm hoping that that's just a spare. Um, unless I find somewhere, I will let you know where that goes. So this is actually the rose gold. Um, looks like it's just the sticker that's put on there. And the other thing that we have to do is to make sure that this, this rubber bung goes into the socket here. I don't know why they didn't pre-install that, but there must have been a, a, an easy, a reason for it. Perfect, so that's all in. You can really see that they've um, got the city commuter in mind here. So you've got the halo light, which they, they say it's the iconic halo light, uh, five watts, so it should be super bright. We've got a reflector on the front, reflectors on either side here, and reflectors down here. Let me turn it around. Uh, reflectors on the, the back here, which is good, on both sides. And it looks like it's a nice big, big light there. Got really wide front tires, at first, don't go hooning it everywhere um, or riding really fast, being stupid. With any new tyre, you do need to wear them in a little bit first prior to uh, getting the full potential out of them. So get a good sort of uh, 50 to 100 Ks. The aesthetics of this look really sleek. Everything looks really tidy and away. Everything's 
seems to be hidden a few wires which is to be expected and it re looks really good uh, nice to have that front disc brake which i can't wait to uh have one on the rear of my nine bot at some point i've got the bits just haven't been able to do it yet this has a front and rear disc brake so nice uh, to have a bell on there the zook board didn't come with that unfortunately this it cheap bell but sounds loud enough you got your lcd screen here we'll go turn it on in a moment after we get it charged and a nice ergonomic throttle there it's pointed towards you a little bit more let's get this charged up and uh, we'll go ahead and switch her on right so we've gone ahead and plugged her in and uh, we've got a red light to say that she's charging the charge point doesn't seem to have rubber rings on this but it looks like it will keep out majority of water it is an ip54 rated scooter uh, which means you can ride it in the rain just don't go through any deep puddles first thing we get is the charging indicator so it's on two bars and it's flashing so should we go ahead and switch her on yeah i think we just do it with that button there i think you hold it oh There you go. So it doesn't look like you're going to be able to switch it on properly whilst it's charging. So let's uh, just hold that a second. Ah, there we go. So searching for Bluetooth, you've got your speed. Um, I think we can change that to uh, miles per hour, but it's currently in kilometres. And it looks like you've got your different modes. I haven't read through the instructions just yet, so I'm guessing we just double tap so here we've got the iconic halo light nice and bright for people to uh, to see you coming which is really good this is not so bright but I'm wondering if it does get brighter we're gonna open the new app and we're gonna go ahead and sign up so I'll go ahead and do that and I will be right back Looking at the manual, it does say here that we need to bind the scooter. Please note, new user mode after watching the video, uh, the tutorial video, during the first 500 meters, I guess, of riding, the kit scooter will be locked in e-save mode. Uh, sorry, e-save mode. This feature is for the first usage only, ensuring user safety and allowing time for users to get comfortable with new riding experience after 500 meters. The kick scooter will sound a beep signaling you can now switch mode and more features will be available in the app. Right, so we're going to get rid of that for now. We're going to d bind the device. Uh, okay. Bind with Bluetooth. So we're going to find our scooter. It looks like it's showed up there. Short press the power button of the scooter. So we're just going to press that one. Come over here. a little beep please name your device uh, please follow the prompts on stage to check your throttle and brake status squeeze the left brake that's kind of nice that, and then uh, squeeze the right brake and then press the accelerator perfect a uh, little inspection safety yeah, yeah, wear a helmet. So first things first, when uh, now we've bind the scooter, we've skipped the tutorial, uh, we've done the options on there. Now you can lock and unlock. So if you have a look there, we can see that it's now locked. And it's unlocked now. Riding record, we haven't ridden it yet. Uh, riding statistics. I don't know how many people actually use this stuff, but it's not something that I tend to use too often. Uh, vehicle, me. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Fault codes, dealers and contacts. It's just like owning a car these days. Uh, settings. Oh, there we go. We can go to miles and save. 
and hopefully that will we can change it on there so let's see if we can switch that off let's not change it on there uh, color mode auto light dark let's try dark I'm guessing that's for the app itself vehicle let's go up here energy recovery uh, we'll leave that off for now custom mode when customer mode is enabled you can set the maximum ride speed under this mode gears cannot be switched so max ride speed you can set is 25 kilometers unit of speed all oh, miles per hour the setting is only for speed displayed on the meter so why is it not on there maybe after we've had ridden it a little bit uh, number of cycles that's handy to know uh, you've got your serial number VIN number battery number all good stuff And you can even uh, press go to uh, log your ride. Ah, there we go. So now things have updated for some reason. I can now change it to miles per hour. No. Custom mode, sport mode will be unlocked when total mileage traveled on the vehicle reaches 200 meters. Okay. So I guess we take it for a ride and uh, see how it performs. There's the beat to say that we've done it. The grips feel really nice on this. Right, so uh, the actual folding mechanism is really easy to do. I'm just going to lift this bit up here. Just hold on to that for me. That's it. Pull that back. Barely any strength required. And then let go. Pull it back a bit. And then that will go down. Just hook, hooks onto there. Hooks into there. And then you can lift it one handed. It is a 20.3 kilo beast, so if you are living in a tower block, it might uh, be easier to have it in the shed if you've got one. Um, I wouldn't want to be lugging it up and downstairs all day. And then to unlatch it, we just press this button here. Which one? Pull it all watch. the way up, and then latch it down. Make sure that that's up. And it's not going to come loose. Looking at the latch, it's actually, uh, I don't know if it's plastic or metal, probably plastic, so I don't know how long that's going to last. And then there's a rubber bit there just to keep it in place, I guess. I took it out for a ride, and uh, as you can tell by the ride, the software update decided to happen. I got to about 200 to 500 meters of distance, you heard the beep, and then it allowed me to put it in its second mode, which I guess is normal. So you've got eSaver, oh, we'll do show you that bit in a second, eSave, which gets you up to a maximum of 9 miles per hour, and then you press it once, and then it gets you up to around 15 to 16 miles an hour. The speed of this thing, it gets up to speed very, very quickly, which is nice, um, but you can tell it really is just for the city sort of 
city commuter as when it got there it just felt slower and I'm used to these faster scooters now so it'd be nice to have uh, a bit more speed on it so if, uh, if anybody knows how to increase the speed of the scooter please let me know. As you can see here it does come with the halo light which is very bright but that's just a uh, light to show people. You've got the rear light down here, uh, it seems like it's probably the brightest it's going to get. And then if we double tap there we get the main headlight. So fairly bright. We'll have to take it out at night to see. If we press the brake, it does get brighter to show that we are braking. And that's with the back, back brake and then the front, front brake. So both brakes activate the brake light. As for comfortability, it is a nice to have that wide, the wide extra space here for your feet. I like to ride with my seat, feet side by side on longer journeys. As for uh, bumps, it doesn't have suspension. It is quite comfortable compared to say the 9 Bot Max when I first got it. Um, and I think it might just be because it's got the, the, the rubber there that adds a little bit of extra cushioning. But yeah, th this is purely for uh, smooth roads I reckon. Nice, good roads. Nothing that I particularly do, so no uh, off-roading, things like that. Be nice to see if they added add suspension to these eventually but at the price point of 599 euros you can't go wrong it's half the price near enough of the 9 bot max in stock form which is outstanding and look how clean it is when i was out there I, out on that ride i did enjoy these handles they're nice and grippy they don't have that knobbly texture like they did on the 9 bot they, they just feel a bit more premium um, we'll see how long they last over riding. It feels comfortable when you put your hand on there and you do that. Right, so I've got the 9 Bot Max side by side. As you can see, I'm not stock, so the clearance is going to be different. But you can see how wide the board on the right is compared to the 9 Bot. So that is roughly just over six and a half inches or 17 centimeters roughly and then we've got this one which is you've probably got usable space of 17 and a half to 18 inches with a little bit of overhang so it's not a huge amount different but it it does uh, improve the ride just that little bit more you get that little bit of extra perch for your feet so as you can see, uh, we've taken it out for a quick ride, nothing too extensive today. Uh, my arm doesn't allow that, but I've got a good, good feel for the scooter, just doing that little bit. Feels really nice, it looks sleek, it's really well put together by the looks of it. In theory, let, we'll see that over time uh, as we continue to ride it. So over the coming weeks and months, we're gonna show you how to fix the KQI3. So we're going to change the front and rear tyre, adjust the brakes or fix them completely. We're going to change the battery, we're going to change the folding mechanism, we're going to change the throttle, the dashboard, the brake lever and also the headlamp. Nearly everything. Nearly everything, yes. Um, the chassis is going to stay the same. Um, in most cases, as I don't want to have any waste and this scooter is very new, uh, as you can see it's just come out of the box I want to preserve as many of these parts as possible so all I'm going to do is take the parts off put them back on again and show you as a new part uh, hopefully I don't break anything that um, might take all night sorry? that might take all night yeah it will take a little time so it's going to be a little little. we're going to do this in incremental videos for you in bite sized chunks and we're going to try and lay we're going to label all the tools that are needed throughout the changes. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and quick ride and setup of the scooter and look forward to seeing more of the videos on this particular scooter. If you have any other ideas, leave comments down below and I'll be happy to see if I can do anything for you there. So please, subscribe if you want to uh, carry on on this journey and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.